Welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Let me just get my screen adjusted first. I think we are all good. Let's see how everything looks. I'll do the introduction in a moment. Unfortunately, with going live, there's a few things that I have to set up. It doesn't let me set it up in advance. And if it does, I haven't figured it out yet. So if I go to my content and go to live, it's showing it right here. I can see the details. So I'm just setting everything up and then I'll uh, get started with introductions. I feel at this point there's no need to rush and get all hasty. If you're watching this at a later date, you can simply just fast forward past this part. Okay. Let me go here. Okay, so we're live and it's public. I can go back. I found view and live control room, so I found that last time. I think it's all the growing pains of filming live videos on YouTube and figuring out just what needs to be done. Stuff like this, like just setting up the pin post at the top. It'd be nice if it would let me run it and not have to um, adjust it. Okay, so we're live, it's public. Um, I have that pinned on there. The view here seems a little bit, let's change the angle, let's see how that goes. All right, so that shows it not in real time. Now that's in real time. At least it should have adjusted that. Let me put my hand there and see if it... Okay, so there's about a five second delay. Okay, let's get a paper towel going. It does seem to be a little froggy in the lens. You could probably lower this. And then we could tilt it up more so you can see better. How people get it to go perfect the first time they turn it on is beyond me. Um, not that old of a man, but I guess once you hit that certain point in your life, the technology starts moving quicker than you do. Let's make sure the lens is nice and good. You guys can see to about here. You should be able to see the whole screen. We'll get started with introductions and rolling. Okay. All right, so yesterday, I went live and I did an unboxing of the Speedball Deluxe Block Cutting Kit. And I had set it to apparently where only members of the channel could comment and, um, and respond. So I was sitting there going through it, reviewing it, asking what shapes people would like to see. And there was no response from any viewer. And that just made it a train wreck. Um, when I finally realized that I just set it off wrong. But it's kind of the growing pains. There's a kind of video uh, live podcast that I like to watch where they're in like their 300th video. But I remember in their seventh, they're just like, you smell smoke? No, no, I don't smell smoke. And the other one's like, you smell smoke? That light fixture's smoking. And they had all their lights set up and one of them burnt out. 
so that's what it feels like. Anyway, yesterday I introduced the tools, materials. It was my first time ever doing any type of um, relief printing and any type of carving in that regard. And I had used a knockoff of the Speedy Carve by Speedball, which is some type of, almost like a, feels like an eraser. Uh, we experimented with the different shapes that came with the carving tool. Uh, saw sizes one, two, three, and five. We tried different shapes, lines, etc. So carved into that to see how the results would be. Then from there, using cheap drawing ink, uh, printing ink, and drawing paper, we rolled it out. This was my first print when I realized that nobody was able to comment and I had let the ink essentially dry on the pad. Then I started applying pressure differently. I used a pencil case and you could see I didn't get a smooth application there. I tried some pressure. This was putting the block upside down onto the paper itself, which seemed to be the best result. Uh, one of our viewers had worked in a, as a sheriff's deputy and had done a lot of uh, fingerprinting and had offered some advice through that, which is great about these live sessions, especially when you're learning a new medium. And here is playing with the blue. This was the first, this was the second. Getting a darker application is uh, the goal. So that was yesterday, and I'll move this off to the side, and then I'll talk about today's goals and what I'm looking at. So here's another one of those knockoff blocks. I got them on Amazon, an eight pack for about $18. So it's a little over $2, one of these blocks, which isn't bad at all. It's pretty easy to carve. That being said, the only thing I could think of comparing it to is carving wood as a Boy Scout, which was hard. Um, so we'll see from there. I, I did a variation of drawings on it. And I'll talk about that. It's four by six. So a little over $2, um, sketched with a 5B pencil. And it seems like you could use anything to sketch. I also had taken a piece of paper, which I have right down here. And wrote the name of the Gibson Girl piece right there, just so I can remember it. Uh, Gibson girl itself and my name and I put it upside down and rubbed it on and it transferred the graphite really easily so I had originally sketched this directly onto it but it's going to be reverse of the image that I was looking at if I sketched onto paper and placed it it would have created reverse when I pressed it but then my print would be the right direction so um, that's some things to keep in mind. So my writing, and I, I had to do it with the writing to make sure that the writing was the right way. A few other things. We did see yesterday that it races really well. If you want to draw directly onto it. Um, the marks that are left, really not too concerned about. I'm gonna bust out one of these pencils just in case we decide to uh, use it. Okay, so here's the idea. This is a sketch of a Gibson girl drawing. Um, Gibson girl, there's Charles Gibson. Um, late 1800s, early 1900s, and he drew these women that were kind of 
depicting the the woman of the time period, uh, intellectual, um, active, etc. And they were featured, I think, in a lot of magazines. So I'm pulling up this image again on my Kindle just in case I need to reference it. And it's the eternal question. Have it up on the side. There's a whole bunch of um, different images of it on Google Images. I'm drinking a soda. It's a long day at work, so I'm just kind of trying to keep myself going a little bit. get into it in a moment so last but not least any other things I wanted to mention okay so I'm gonna try to carve that fine line around here so I'm gonna pull a lot of space out areas that I put in dark are gonna stay so I'm gonna try to carve my light areas so this square isn't originally there but I figured a dark border would be nice for the print. I put this slash there in reverse just to experiment with if we had wanted to um, just simply see if we wanted to do numbered prints and if you wanted to have that directly on it. The lettering itself, I'm not sure if I want to carve the letters out or try to carve around the letters, but I'm thinking I'll carve them out, especially if I'm gonna do the black around that. Yesterday, a lot of experimenting with the carving tool. This is by Speedball. Apparently these are great for getting started and they worked well for me. Um, experimented with the different widths and I did find, and I'm using this bigger one as an example going down to those two edges was the max width okay so I'll just start things off with scraping or carving this line out just to get into the groove pun intended if you have any questions comments any ideas let me know in the live chat. I have my laptop right alongside me so I can see what you all are saying. Okay, now we don't have to baby this one because right off the bat I slipped right up there and didn't get to that edge. I should have probably held a finger here to have stopped it right at that point. Rotating the block itself is what I had seen in YouTube videos. Okay, and that let me pull up right where I wanted to. And like I had said, and like I had read, you really don't have to go too deep, so we'll see. There's somebody on Etsy who has just beautiful, beautiful lino cuts of kind of Art Nouveau, um, Alphonse, Wusha, I'm not sure the pronunciation, type prints. And It's really amazing the possibilities with the block cutting or I, I, I think that this falls within block cutting it just um, it seems like people use these as stamps so I'm really not too sure what to call it but I'm just gonna use it block printing 
Okay, so I was just trying to get my cuts around. I'm also using that to just do my straight lines and get in the flow of things. As we progress, we'll get to more detailed areas because you're know, just getting into flow. Now this square down here, I'm at that black line in the middle is what I want to leave. So I'm going to hit this edge. And I did find yesterday with the triangles in the top corner that on the block it looked like I absolutely just butchered and slaughtered that spot. And it, it printed fine. Definitely a slower, more relaxed process. I'm sure professionals have a pattern that they follow. Like if they remove large areas first or not, my idea is to use the number one along the edges of areas that I don't want cut. So I could get a nice line. And then I'll come back in with a bigger cutting tool for that excess area. Of course, like I said, if you have any questions or ideas, let me know in the comments because you know this is my first time trying this out and experimenting with it. I had thought about maybe putting something interesting in this box, but I think I'll leave that be unless you all have any suggestions, kind of an Art Nouveau type shape to put in here. So if there's any type of shape you'd like to see me experiment with, let me know. That being said, uh, while I wait to see if anybody has any comments, I'm going to look at this line and make sure that I have it good. I'm going to use the electric eraser on it. I can erase completely actually and redraw that curve comes in and comes out. So my dark will be my raised area. Which will be the printed line. The profile is such a challenge for me. And why I decided to go for the profile. I don't know. I kind of just searched Gibson Girl and just dove into it. I used the Gibson Girls a lot this summer to get me started with uh, proportions with portrait work. That's gonna come up on an angle. We could probably cut it wider and then cut closer as we get to it. Okay. So, I think I got nothing. Just, let's just get into it. Let's go right along this edge. I'm gonna take it slow. And try to not let it jump like it just did. And I'm gonna curve and twist my block as I go. There's that kind of want it to jump forward at times. I think with practice and a steady hand, I 
you can probably get really good at it. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that are really good. Of course there are. Um, uh, part of me had thought about just going as one long cut and seeing how that would affect everything, but I lost it there, so let me bring it off to the side. I'm going to come in and then out. Kind of just using the out as kind of an escape method. Put my finger on top to prevent it from slipping. Using my other fingers to turn. I'd say I'd have large hands. This is four by six. There's probably a way you can grip if you have smaller hands. And if you're somebody who has like the big old hands for playing bass, you'd probably be really good at just turning these around. Okay, so that's the outside edge of my darkened line. Whew, that was a little nerve-wracking. It's exciting though, it's, it really is. Let's um, get the inside. using the left piece of the cutter that I can see to hug the right side of my line. But this one I'm not able to go off. I wonder if I go from this direction it might be better. Let's see, before I start cutting, uh, we come up high, got my dark eyebrow, upper portion of the lid, a little eyelash come out, so I'm going to go kind of really light along this edge at first. out into the face because I'm not worried about that. The lip, the mouth shape, we come down. We come out here. I think whenever we do like a test print, we can then see what needs to be adjusted. That was the part that I was most concerned about. One of the most, one of the parts. Let's um, get the edge of the hair here. Maybe come down from the top behind the ear. And it might be interesting to kind of go in and instead of trying to get a consistent line, let's go in that fashion, just because of the hair, the feathering, because it's down there. Okay. Now, I'm going to take that same approach here. Just bringing it down to this edge. There we go, perfect. Let's 
do the back side of this hair. Going right, right to that spot and stop. Okay. Let's do the inside. I guess the, um, honestly, out of the whole things, besides like the lettering, the, the, the face and the eyes itself are where I really need to just concern myself. So that's where I'll put more of these marks. Of course, resting my hand on it and moving my hand around is going to cause issues. But let's see if we can figure out what to carve for the eyes. I'm just erasing it. There you go. See how easy it erases. Eyebrow. That. Out. That needs to come up. I think I like that. And I'm not using the eraser, I'm using a tool to scrape it out. Just cut that out. Now what I'm going to do is cut here. I'm just going to ride that across. So I can pull out all of those areas. Let's see what size I can switch to. This is size three. I'm not sure if I should be using a five or just a two to go this wide, but we'll see. And right, so this is the flesh of the face, just pulling out all these areas. There's no um, cross hatching or anything in the drawing, so I'm just going to pull it all out. Feels a little loose. Let me see if I can tighten this. Is it going to tighten down? There we go. I feel like I should be using a wider 
cutter. I did pick up a second one. Oh, a set of, came with two. This is for like if my friends want to try it out. It seems like a very hobby-oriented tool. And I think a lot of people who are crafty seem to enjoy it. So hopefully I can get a friend or two or a relative to hang out and do some carving with me. So we're pulling out this whole basal feature. Let's get this out. Sorry, I'm not talking that much. Let's go like that. There we go. Okay, so we're just literally just chipping away at the bigger features. All right, now a debate, do I want to put any pattern in there? Why don't I switch over to the number one, back to the number one, and play with the letters for a moment. That might be the best way to do it for me, personally, just stamina-wise, is to try. What's up, Percy? You want to hop up? No? Okay. Let's just try to just go back and forth between the different mark making. Have the number three. It can't come on the table, Percy. Oh, you could sit on my lap. I think I can carve around a cat. Hey, Percy Boo. You can sit. Sorry, I got a cat on my lap. And she just wants her way onto the art table. No? All right, let's go down here. Okay. So let's carve out these letters. I am gonna carve out the black here. We'll see how that looks. I think it's probably a matter of aesthetics and composition.
Small circle, let's see if we can. Curious how this will read. My friend's son is a little weird. They have a to read joke. A girl went to him and asked him if he liked to read, and he didn't know who to read was. And she was, you know, asking him if he liked books. Whew. Definitely the hardest part for me so far. I'm excited to see how butchered it's gonna look. <laughs> and I probably don't need to stress too much about it being perfect at this point with these letters. I'm wondering how much of like the kind of artist proof stage is used for fine tuning and corrections. I think I started talking earlier about just all the different smooth carves there's like the jagged carves that you'll see let's just do a small circle Try these letters up on top. I made these ones bigger. It'll probably be a lot easier. Makes me wonder how carving linoleum would feel.
ankles are hard. The O's. Excited to get to the hair to see what we can do there, but well, those are the things we need to finish first. I'll tell you right now, any lettering that I try from this point on, unless there's a, another method, I think that it has to be double this size if I want to get a curving flow with where I am at. Let's pull this out. Okay. Think. Do I want a shape here? How do I do this? It's kind of a shape like that. We could put some little cross hatching in it and everything else I'll pull out. There we go. All right, I went around this edge earlier, so I'm just going to use my wider tool. Put my finger on top to stop once I get there. Right. Along this edge. that and the part that's cutting in is riding that line I'm happy with that I can definitely see areas where it would be easy to start rushing especially for me we start hitting that stamina breaking point Hey Persico Let's bring it in hit that car Hey, Percy. All right, we'll curve along this edge. And then we'll plot the space between the hair and our little arch shape. 
This cutter works really good. Of course, you. Wait, they're trying to eat my paints. I was trying to stay in my lap, but you were in my lap before, but you were trying to just get in to the um, art table. All right, we had cut around the outside here. We're just taking it slow. Just guiding this around. There we go. We might have a double line there, but that's fine. That'll be good for me to learn and see when that happens. Percy. Do you want to say hi to everybody, Percy Poo? Hi, everybody. What's the poop? going right along that curve. All right, pulling all this outside. Okay, we're going to go along the face, but I'm going to need to watch out with the hair that's coming forward. I could also get the rest of this out too. Let's get this out first. Sorry that Percy's wanting to be a part of the show. Oh, I think I just dropped Percy. Right there. Okay. I'm gonna want to twirl a hair two as it starts to come off so let's switch to the number one and what I'll do is come off the face and just start cutting those out I can clean up. This has to be pretty much a just hard pink eraser. That's what it smells like. coming in in a way. I have that outline cut, but really not looking to chance it. There you go. Now we can get this out.
All right. Now, I left these triangles, um, arches here that I just wanted to do. I think this is loose. A little bit of parallel line pattern with. I think what I'll do is carve to the point that it's initially like probably 70% carved and then from there do some prints and see what can be adjusted and then either continue on this video or in another video depending on the time what else I want to do because it's 430 now which isn't too late but you know being a school teacher it's good to wind down all right let's um cut a little hair here this will be a good place to experiment Maybe cutting the outside of the hair will help because the rest of the area is going to be black. Cut on the outside, inside. Okay, so around the no nostril and the eyes are the next areas that I know that I have to be super focused on. So this whole area gets taken out. And this triangle right here. That out. Let's pull that out. Now with the eye, right there. I think it's best now to just get away from this area once I take out that chunk. And then we'll come back for the later one. Now with the hair, my main focus is just pulling out just highlights. But now it's just getting the, the super nice smooth cuts and 
and curves. Well, the ear. Let's see. Let me look at the original. Which I had up, but... Why not the inside of the ear right here? All right, so I'm gonna come out. A few spots. Can I? Other curves. You can even do lighter highlight so I'll get some variation in the line width and then I can pull it right back to the lines. On the other side continue the curve here These are all highlights, but I remember that. taking a deep gouge and accompanying it with the, the lighter gouges will help get our variety. I'm trying to just contour them. Yeah, he's standing up high and watching me. What's up, bud? So with those cuts, um, let's bring a little bit on this side. longer cuts and just curve them around. They all come out of this spot. And curl it on the 
down. I cannot imagine doing this on wood or a harder surface. These people must be just absolute masters. here. Let me clean up a little bit so I can see a little bit better. How long have we been doing this? This is a long Forty-five. So, okay. So about an hour so far of just kind of carving and chatting. That's not bad at all. Put this on the floor. The on the floor. I have a trash can right underneath the desk. It's actually not really a trash can. It's a um, litter container, which make great. Art room trash cans. Okay, back to my thin one. Pull out a little white in the eye, and instead of cutting, I'm just going to take and stab that in. It seemed to have worked to make mark making yesterday, so that will be the little trick we use and see how that works. Let's get some curves here. And rather than doing a straight line, I'm trying to just get a little flick with it. I should be turning the block. Okay, so I can see areas where I'm getting impatient and things that I have to watch out for. Hopefully that impatience wears off. Let's see, let's get some curve in here. All right, 
I'm gonna take a piece of paper. And just try kind of a rubbing. Let's see what we're looking like. Let's grab some Conte. Oh, that's pretty cool. All right, I want to do that again um, and <laughs> make it more serious. Okay. So, printer paper on top. Open the place. All right, I'm, you're probably gonna hear in my voice that I'm getting like super excited to see what the results are gonna be like. Um, but this is kind of giving you a little bit of an idea what we can expect. I think now would be a good time for me to put this Conte away. And we'll put out some ink and we'll try Making some prints. I had a paper towel. I'm going to damp it on a little bit. That does not erase the graphite as well as. does with the ink. That's a shame. Okay, so I'm not going to worry too much about that then. I'm gonna move the cutters off on the side. I think I'll be done with the cutting here. There might be stuff that I need to go back and do, but I um, will probably save that for another day. So I just wanna experiment with the printing now. So I'm putting the cutting tools in the container themselves. drawing paper. Which I have right here. And we have the ink out and ready. Now this paper is so I'll only be able to do it one. No, I could get two sheets. We have two cuts from yesterday, not perfect. We can use that. Yeah, we'll do those. All right, so we got the ink. We have our brayer. I have a spoon, so I'll use the back of the spoon, but I want to put something on top of it before we go press down. And every single time I bring something in here for that purpose, I lose it. But not this time, I found it. That, that, that. Okay, let's do this. Ink, I don't know if there's anything I need to do, like shake it up or anything. Pull this out. 
grab our brayer. We will roll the ink out. With an equally coat. Okay, I think it should be good. We're going to try a few different printing directions. One time with paste, placing the paper on top. I'll try it with other methods. But I'm excited to see what happens. Okay. Paper right on top. I'm just going to use this heavy piece of cardboard especially a book cover and I'm just going to press down and see if I can get my equi pressure taking place. I'll try the spoon on the next one and we'll see as we go. So lift it up. This will be our first print off of this. I'm excited. I'm pulling a print. And there we go. Uh, inked pretty light so I think I need to go heavier with the ink. Uh, it might also be the pressure that I'm applying but I'm excited. And I'll look into more detail at the, the next one because this uh, is also kind of what I had seen the first time I had done the last one where it was a light mark. So either it was light rolling or light pressure. I'm going to try the same exact method and see if we get anything different. This is just pushing down with my hand and we're just using drawing paper. Next, we'll try our spoon. I was just kind of walking it with my hand. Ooh, okay. So it did get darker. It may just be my initial inking that is giving a little bit of issues. I want to keep these in order so we can see the progress. But I will try a spoon now down here, down there. Grab another piece of paper. And then as the prints get darker, then I guess we can see what's going on overall. And then from there, we'll talk about what I could do differently. This one, grab more ink. up. I think on my hand. It's okay, it's all water based. All right, place this on top. This time I will, I need to have something between this and the paper, the print, the spoon. So why everybody says a wooden spoon, I'm not sure. I must have a metal spoon. Well, I have wooden spoons, but maybe I'll get a dedicated wooden spoon for this. I did find with the mono type printing that the circular pattern was the best. I do feel like it's moving and sliding though. So we'll see. Okay, pull that off. 
gonna pull our print. This is spoon. Okay, that was a lot better. Let's go for one more inking. And then we'll look at them. So I put out quite a bit of ink, so maybe I'll do more than one. This is definitely a heavy application, which will smudge and probably lose detail. I think with this one, I'm gonna apply it. I'm gonna try this guy and do a spoon on that. And if this one comes out nice and dark, we'll be golden and our troubles will be over. The directional lines, I did mention that I found did show through in other processes, so we'll go around again. Alright, let's pull that print. Oh, that's nice. I did see some lines fill up on that one, so put these two on the side. We have extra ink. <laughs> so we'll go again. Actually, let's try another paper. I do have some paper cut to five by seven. Percy keeps on going after this paper for some reason. I do feel like I'm over inked on it though. This is the Stonehenge drawing paper, the craft, I believe, color. No, I don't think it's dark enough for the craft. Let's see how it looks. We'll do this and then I think I have a, yeah, this is the tan. the idea how much pressure I'm applying. So I hope you'll enjoy these videos and these live streams. If you ever want to support this channel, I have a whole bunch of links down below. And uh, shout out and thank you to everybody that supports me through the Patreon. I have a lot of exclusive content and more that's going up there. And everybody that's been supportive through um, the coffee and the super thanks. So thank you all. And we'll have some watercolor videos up soon. Ooh, okay. So that is the uh, cotton drawing paper. And I should try one one face down, so we'll do that. And that should be the yeah, end, and we can look at them and compare them. I could even grab the same color paper and see how that looks. But it did seem like the spoon method was what everybody was recommending online.
this time I'm going to take it and just stamp it down. I can't imagine <laughs> we get particular pressure spots coming down like this, but I'll try it anyway. They do sell little presses that lever down. I was looking at them online, they're about $80 starting. That might be for down the line. Flip it over and pull that off. Okay, and there we go. So, I'm going to lay out all the ones that we did for us to look at and compare. Do a quick cleanup first. So, I've just been using the paper towels and water to wipe these up. And it seems to be working well enough. How far back you're supposed to clean them. I am not sure. I'm also curious just running water over it how that would be. But these are the water soluble or the water based inks that are cleaning in this fashion where oils, I think you use the mineral spirits and other solvents for cleaning up the oil prints, which I know a lot of people are moving away from trying to use solvents and stuff in their artwork. So these other methods are good. I think uh, for health reasons, you know, people will often uh, avoid the solvents. They'll also, it's just because of like headaches and stuff, and breathing that in. Okay, almost done cleaning up, but that's going to give us space to lay out all the prints that we did to compare them and to see what needs to be taken into account in the future. I am really excited though, and I'm glad that you have the opportunity to try these processes and, and play around with them and you know, show them on YouTube. Look, the pencil marks are still there. Just to throw a few numbers at y'all, price-wise, the kit with the ink and the roller and everything on Amazon is sub-50. If you look on Blick, it's about 50. If you look on other art websites and art stores, it's about 60, I'd say. So for the kit, the price, not bad at all. I think it's definitely worth it. It does only come with the one pink block and the one linoleum block, which I haven't tried the pink block or the linoleum. I bought this pink block off of Amazon, and I mentioned that earlier, in a set of eight for about $18, so about $2 each. I think you can buy, you can buy the pink blocks and all the other carving blocks for cheap as well. And in a lot of the reviews, you know, people say that they wish it came with, like any of the kits. They say that it wish it came with more than one. So I think after that first stamp, after they tried it out and understood it, they wanted to jump into trying another one, which is obviously makes plenty of sense. You want to try it out and play around with it. Um, so keep that in mind. The cutting tool comes with a kit, but I had seen it on Amazon for 12 Blick 
for maybe 11 so a little bit cheaper on Amazon, on Blick or uh, Jerry's, and probably other art stores like uh, Jack Richardson, is that what it is? Jackson Art Supply? What else? I think we're about done cleaning this. Should be done cleaning this too. Yeah, so the carving tool, they have some knockoff, no name brands on Amazon, but the reviews all say just go for the Blick one. And then in other areas where it's like, if you're a professional artist, I think you go for Japanese woodcut um, cutting tools. And I used cheap paper, except for the Stonehenge drawing paper, but I buy that by the sheet. I'm gonna say that's about $4 for a large sheet. And yeah, so four dollars for a large sheet, but I only used a five by seven piece. Okay, I cleaned up and talked about that. Here are the two prints on 100% cotton drawing paper. Looks like they are different toned papers. Um, getting a smooth print I'm having trouble with it where I am not sure if I'm over applying ink or not maybe I need to apply more we'll get an idea you could see some areas where it's still raised and I would have to go back and clean those that being said I think that's just part of the process. You would just ink one of them, see how it looks, go back and clean them. So I could clean that. Here I had said, oh, I wonder if I'll get a double line because I had used the number one right along the chin. And then I used the number five and kind of skirted that edge. And that's what that double line is right there. Aesthetically, I think it's up to the artist and the viewer if you like it or not. The trying to carve the lettering, it's funny because it looks like my handwriting, but it looks a little jagged. I'm not sure if I would try this, or it almost kind of gets jagged to the point where it feels like it's um, Mediterranean, like a Greek and Grecian, Grecian um, with those marks. And carving the letters, I think I had said I would rather just go a larger size. Um, and I didn't feel certain of myself. I wasn't really having that much fun. Um, let's check on our harder inkings on cheap drawing paper. Now I had went in and used the drawing, uh, the dip pen needle, uh, glass dip pen, to poke a hole in the eye area. And you can see how it was successful right here, but it wasn't successful on this one. So that might have been potential over inking and filling in that spot, or it just smudging out. Then we have the first two prints that we had done and it seems like initially I am just not putting enough ink out. Moving things out the way so you can see what happened. Yeah, so here's my initial, and it went too light. That might be just probably good just to get ink on there and then to see what I need to clean up. I do like the curvatures that I got in the hair though. Using the number five in the hair 
as well as the number one. Gives you a nice variety there. Working the eye spot, I had used the eraser and went back in with the drawing, um, the pencil. And so that's something to take note of how easy it is to go back and adjust. I'd put this little box down here, just experiment if you were ever wanting to number prints one out of two, if you'd want to do it directly in it or not. Um, okay, let's see. So we inked heavier, heavier, heavier. I believe we started using the spoon with these. So the spoon was definitely helping. This one I had placed the block face down on. Here is, I'll have to look back and see. But definitely a lot of variety with it. I think that this, between these two are probably the best. I'll have to clean up those spots and just do more inks. Yeah, look, if you look here, we have all these extra lines that didn't show up in the other one, so there must have been a lot more pressure applied or the ink was catching on to other spots. But I really hope you enjoyed um, learning a lot with this process. I'm curious if you all have used this process yourself, um, if you have any ideas. I think I want that one in the middle. I'm gonna take a picture to use as the cover photo for this. And the Gibson girl was a really fun reference to use. And it's cool how it kind of came out Art Nouveau feeling. I had mentioned I'd seen somebody on um, Etsy that had done Art Nouveau prints. They're definitely professional. So I hope you all have a good day. I'm going to sign off. Thank you all for watching and following um, along with my experiments, just seeing what I'm up to. And I'll be back with some watercolor painting videos. Let me know what you'd like to see in the comments down below. Uh, have a great day, and take care.